Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Have you ever watched the Olympics and thought to yourself, these athletes are pretty good and all, but where's the event that incorporates ice cream? Well, you already know where to look for that. The Fry Cook Games is the episode where Patrick gets a job as a fry cook for the Chum Bucket, and he and Spongebob compete against each other in the annual Fry Cook Games. Like Jellyfish Hunter, this episode aired on September 28, 2001, and is the episode that gave us this Spongebob plug and play system from Jack Specific. I played this a ton as a kid and loved it so much. I actually own this instead of the other plug and play that everybody else probably thinks about more often with Spongebob. But that's another story. We also see things that oddly enough become more common later on, like Patrick and Plankton interacting, and Spongebob looking unusually buff, at least in terms of usual continuity. This episode also continues the occasional theme of Spongebob and Patrick having an argument and not being friends in some way, established all the way back in episode 8, Naughty Nautical Neighbors from season 1. And while that does make it seem like I don't have very much to say about this episode, that's actually not true. This is one of the most memorable episodes to me as a kid, and I rewatched it a lot on DVD. So let's watch this episode and see how great it truly is. So the episode starts up and we're at the 21st annual Bikini Bottom Fry Cook Games. Harold comes to light the torch to start the game, but the wind blows out of the fire he had. He runs back again and actually lights the torch and himself as well. Why was he not already in the stadium? The realistic fish head who normally commentates the news explains that fried cooks from all over town come and compete in fast food Olympics. But Mr. Krabs and Plankton are always competing there, and both Mr. Krabs and Plankton have made amazing performances in the past and won medals, and they've always held grudges since. This time, the Krusty Krab has somebody else competing, which is no other than SpongeBob SquarePants himself. Mr. Krabs yells at him, and SpongeBob starts to train, followed by Patrick arriving. How did Patrick get on the field? SpongeBob told Patrick he was training for the games, which you had to be a fry cook in order to compete. Patrick thought that would be easy, but Spongebob said that it's not as easy as you think, despite Patrick thinking otherwise. Spongebob got offended by Patrick's statement, and they both started making fun of each other's features, including their skin. Yellow, pink. Patrick stormed off in a huff to get a job as a fry cook, and Spongebob went back to training. Then Mr. Krabs saw that Plankton arrived at the stadium. He's pissed as if Plankton's never there. They walk up to each other, and Plankton rises up to Mr. Krabs' eye level. Mr. Krabs says that Plankton will be powerless against Spongebob, but Plankton says that he has recruited somebody else as well. He directs the crowd's attention, and somebody comes up that everybody becomes afraid of. And when he arrives, the f***ing huge guy was just carrying the real contestant, Patrick Starr. Spongebob was mad that Patrick was there despite working for the Chum Bucket for only 5 minutes. Since now they both had fried cook jobs, they wanted to beat each other in the games. And then they walked back to their corners more sad than anything that they'd be competing against each other. But Mr. Krabs and Plankton managed to convince them that they weren't friends and managed to make them angry against one another so that either of them can win the medal for their prospective restaurants. And then the events start. It's about f***ing time. The first event was a deep fry pole vault. Spongebob lost and Patrick won while also committing mass murder and cannibalism is revealed to exist in Bikini Bottom. The second event was the chocolate high dive. Spongebob's move was a full banana fudge pop with two sticks, as well as toasted almonds. Plankton tells Patrick to show up Spongebob, and he does. Patrick's move was a single scoop strawberry cone with a chocolate dip. Because Pistachio was busy that day. After the high dive, the events continued until nighttime, and the scores were tied before the final event. Bun wrestling. Mr. Krabs and Plankton reminded Spongebob and Patrick respectively how they hate each other, so they both buffed up in one second and started wrestling each other, which later led into a foot fetish and one of them losing their identity. After all that, they start straining to death to bring each other down, only for their pants to rip and they reveal that their underwear was in the color of their best friend, and they felt bad about their fight. They promised never to fight again and leave the stadium before there was an actual winner which doesn't fly with Mr. Krabs or Plankton, and the episode ends. Well, even that didn't age well. So that was the Fry Cook Games, and that was an awesome episode. I have a lot to say about it. I'll start off with SpongeBob and Patrick as a whole. This is one of my personal favorite times where they ever got into a fight. 
It's not necessarily caused by a prank like in Naughty Nautical Neighbors where Squidward broke up their friendship, or anything mean-spirited like episode 373, The Fishbowl from season 9. It started because Spongebob took offense to Patrick by underestimating Spongebob's job as a fry cook, which is definitely fair. I always thought some jobs would be easy as a kid, and my parents said that it's not what I think it is. I never fought with my parents about anything like that, but you get the idea. And of course, I love Spongebob and Patrick calling each other pink and yellow respectively. Yellow! Pink! Pink! Yellow! Some other lines in between them are hilarious as well, like the fingernails. Fingernails! 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 You don't even have fingernails! <laughs> and the wrestling sequence between the two of them is great as well. Even if their resolution was a little rushed, it's still a very sweet ending. I also like how the Fry Cook Games has a history of Mr. Krabs and Plankton being the most competitive out of all the contestants in the past. It's cool how they were shown to be pretty athletic, which was completely forgotten about in the later seasons. Around the time I was in middle school, my favorite scene was when Mr. Krabs and Plankton walked towards each other glaring, and it turns into a show tune ending with Plankton saying, I love messing things up. And of course, the funniest characters in this episode are Lou, Get your fish sticks here! I'll say it again, I'm pretty sure that's cannibalism. And the huge guy who carried Patrick. Ah. This guy's my favorite, at least in 2003. I do love how they parodied the Olympic events with the traditional high dive, wrestling, and pole vault. It's really fun and I love seeing how Spongebob and Patrick performed in them. But speaking of the events, that's our segue into the part where I start bitching. Let's start off with an actual criticism. While I love the parody of the Olympics, I do wish they showed some more events. The actual story itself doesn't start until about a minute into the episode, where we learn how Mr. Krabs and Plankton were regular competitors in the games, and when Spongebob is revealed to be representing the Krusty Krab this year. If the episode was longer, we could have seen more events in these games. Aside from the wrestling, high dive, and pole vault, the only other times we see any events at all were at the beginning of the episode when the realistic fish head is talking about the games as a whole, but we don't see them for very long. And the montage between Spongebob and Patrick later in the episode, but that was only like 4 seconds long. I'm not totally sure if this would have worked as a 22 minute special, but it could have at the very least benefited as an episode that's 15 minutes long, like episode 65, Shanghai from season 2, 259, Back to the Past from season 7, 410, Feral Friends from season 10, etc. If this was longer, we could have seen more creative ways to parody the events, and I think it would have helped the episode feel a bit more balanced and maybe the ending where Spongebob and Patrick make up could have felt less rushed. And the way Spongebob and Patrick would have performed in other events would be especially fun. And we could have seen Spongebob outperform Patrick in at least one event. I mean hell, the episode is named after the Fried Cook Games themselves. I'd expect to see more events in a way that's just more than a 4 second montage. I still like the events that were shown of course, but I think this would have been much better if it was a longer episode and we got to see more events. But who knows, maybe it was 11 minutes because those were the only events they wanted to do. And trying to do those events with a banana wouldn't translate very well. Now I have one other criticism, but this might be a nitpick. And it's none other than Mr. Krabs. Last time we talked about how episode 77, Jellyfish Hunter, showed how Mr. Krabs became a bit greedier and more mean spirited than he had been up to that point. And it seemed to have continued into this episode as well. Right before he walks away from Spongebob to let him train, he says this. So don't lose! What was wrong with saying something like, Good luck me boyo! That line feels like something he would say if this episode came out in season 6 or any season beyond that. I know he wants Spongebob to win, but he could have said something more motivating and not glared at him. Now in terms of motivation, he does give Spongebob a pep talk later in the episode, but that's only when he's giving Spongebob false information about Patrick not being friends and how he'll betray him. But this part, I'm more okay with because this sequence isn't mean spirited in my opinion. And it's more about Mr. Krabs and Plankton's rivalry, and they were more concerned about winning the medal for their respective restaurant. And since Mr. Krabs and Plankton are sworn enemies, of course they'll go to lengths to one-up each other. They were already holding grudges from how they made great performances at previous Fry Cook games, and now they have a new way to bring home the gold medal. Of course they're going to take advantage of that opportunity. So I'm more than okay with Mr. Krabs' comments to Spongebob in this scene, 
but it would have been nice if during the other scene, he gave more encouraging words and didn't glare at Spongebob. But those are my only criticisms, so of course I had to mention them. Looking beyond those, this is still a fantastic episode. I also love the scene with the misleading pep talks, especially because of the music that's played in the background, which is called Big Ed's March, and it's the same music that played during the title card for episode 22, Muscle Bob Buff Pants from season 1. Of course Patrick's line of not being Rick is funny, and so are the lines that Swindon and Patrick yell right as they perform the deep fried pole vault. I love this episode, and no amount of complaints will change how I feel about it. I rewatched this episode several times, and I don't think I'll ever get tired of it. It's just a fun and creative episode to watch, and easily one of the many classics from season 2. The Fry Cook Games is an amazing episode. The events were parodied really well with all the added fry cook elements, even though I wish we could have seen more of them. The characters are still really dynamic and fun, and there are so many hysterical moments throughout. Nothing short of an iconic episode. As long as this episode doesn't make you hate the real Olympics because they don't make the athletes look like ice cream.